I said in one of the other videos that we were going to put together a little video just explaining to people how we find places to stay. Now, I appreciate for people who are used to doing this, this is old news, okay? So, you know, if you're used to being out on the road, if you're used to off-grid uh, sort of parking up and, and sort of spending nights in the middle of the wilderness, this might not be for you. But for people who may be new to it or maybe a little bit less comfortable with the idea of doing it, we just thought we'd put the video together just to give a little bit of instruction on how you can find places to stay. So we'll tell you about a couple of things that we use um, and we'll start off with the apps that you can pick up relatively easily. Now number one is going to be um, a, an app called Park for the night and it's park for night is the app park for night is brilliant um, what you tend to find on that is there's a lot of free camping spots uh, places um, that people have visited and reviewed um, what I think it's quite well suited for is people who are van life in um, you often find that there's uh, in entries in there for places in cities and towns and that sort of thing that you might not get elsewhere second app we're going to look at is something called search for sites uh, now there is a charge of, uh, attached to this one I think it's about six pounds for an annual membership of it that one is probably not just geared towards people who are van life in full time because this will contain quite a lot of information about things like um, just places where you can deposit waste that sort of thing uh, it has uh, cl affiliated club sites on there which you wouldn't necessarily get uh, on the other one it also has um, some Brit stops which we'll talk about next on there again quite a useful thing to have reviews on there also gives you idea of places you can park for the day so if there's a town for example where you can't park overnight but you might want to visit it'll tell you which car parks you can do that on and like i say you know six pound fee not too bad uh, got a really handy searchable map you can use it offline which is fantastic uh, which means that you're not always relying on an internet connection to get the information off of it uh, Search for Sites is also uh, affiliated with a Facebook group and a campaign called Campra. Uh, and no, that's not the real ale one. This is for the um, campaign for the provision of facilities for motorhomers in the UK. Uh, so it actually stands for Campaign for Real Airs, I believe. Uh, Airs are these European type uh, facilities where you can basically go in, you've got motorhome bays, you've got electric charging stations, you've got somewhere you can deposit your waste. They tend to be a lot cheaper than traditional campsites. So whereas you could be looking to pay in, you know, 25, 30 pound for a campsite for a night, these airs would normally be somewhere seven to 10 pounds, something like that. Uh, and that is more of what we need of in the UK uh, to make the touring sort of lifestyle a viable one where you can support communities so the next facility we use to find somewhere to stay is something called Brit Stops now Brit Stops uh, is one of a number of different sort of um, subscription sort of uh, sort of systems in place where you pay an annual fee in the case of Brit Stops about 30 pound which you pay every February Now these are businesses that are trying to encourage in extra custom effectively okay so they're saying to motorhomers you know you can stay overnight um, in most cases it's free um, and you know their their hope is that you, they are generating extra customers as a result of that
So we've used Brit Stops quite a few times. Um, find they're really good. Uh, the best one we probably used, I think, was a vineyard, which was probably about five or six miles from where the Battle of Hastings um, center was. Uh, and you could obviously buy Plonk, which uh, always helps. Um, with us, I think Brit Stops, if you are a holiday in, holiday in motorhomer or van um, sort of dweller who is going to be traveling somewhere um, but maybe doesn't want to stay in a campsite every night, I think Brit Stop is, is brilliant for that because you will see slightly different places and you're also helping out sort of smaller businesses who obviously need that assistance. I think if you are permanently in your van, um, whilst there's no onus on you as somebody using Brit Stops to purchase services when you go to places, I personally have felt that I would feel very uncomfortable about parking in a pub car park overnight and not even going in and having a couple of drinks or maybe like a, a bar meal or something. And I think the problem with that is if you're doing that every night, what well, you would be spending on campsite fees, you are spending on other things, you know. So that brings us neatly to uh, the last of the things that we use on a regular basis uh, and this is membership of the Caravan and Motorhome Club. Now, when we were originally thinking about how we were going to find places to stay, uh, we looked at club sites and we just didn't feel like they were for us. And that's because I think we were being a little bit kind of um, judgmental in terms of the types of places they were. So we assumed it would be campsites, that they would be res relatively expensive, but maybe a bit cheaper if you remember that sort of thing. Uh, but they would be big sites, uh, they'd be a bit soulless, a bit sort of, you know, not a lot of character to them, you know, and not a real sense of adventure staying there. Uh, now, when we actually started travelling properly the first time, so we went up north, we noticed quite a lot of what were called certified locations. So we looked into this a little bit more, and these are actually brilliant little facilities. So a bit like um, we were talking about with Brit Stops, what you tend to find is businesses or communities have set up facilities to accommodate people in vans. And what that often means is, uh, it might be like a little farm and they've got enough space for four or five vans. So you'll pay less than you would pay for a campsite. Now, the best one of these we used, and this won't shock you, uh, but when we were near Sutton Hoo, because uh, I really wanted to visit there. Um, we ended up in a certified location, which was an old church. So the church is about seven or eight hundred years old. Still a, still a functioning sort of centre of worship for the little village it was in. We're also the member of a Facebook group called Motorhomes and Camper Vans Against Litter. Now these are people who are actively out there in the community trying to correct this image that all camper vans are sort of causing a problem in the environment. Uh, so go on Facebook, check out their page, you know, totally recommend it. Um, and they might be running something in your locality that you can go along an event to help clear up litter, whether it be on a beach or in a forestry or whatever, uh, and, and just get the positive message about uh, people like us out there uh, and in, into the ether, really. <laughs> 